All right, go get him, brother. Wait. Hello. Hello, how are you? Pardon me for my reach. Good afternoon, everyone. My fight is uh, the Rumble in the Jungle. It was held in uh, now what's called the uh, Republic of Congo. What we have today is uh, fufu, and essentially it's a plantain and cassava dumpling. And the sauce is known throughout Africa. What was it about Muhammad Ali that inspired you? Um, tenacity. He had his mindset on his plan and his actions and his political beliefs, and despite what anybody thought, he, um, he was steadfast. It's humbling. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. It has a really interesting texture. In Africa, this fufu is literally the equivalent of having rice. I thought the dish was delicious. I love the texture of the, the fufu. I also love the fact that Eric took something that was really humble and just said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I made a Hong Kong milk tea tiramisu. I feel it really bridges my heritage with the Italian tiramisu. Made the tiramisu beautifully, and the milk tea is just such a smart, thoughtful way to blend the two cultures. It needed that one extra layer of bitterness, maybe something from a spice, or right. maybe, the, maybe the tea would brew a little bit longer. But what a way to finish. Sono tutti molto, molto buoni. Però mi è piaciuto molto il lavoro che ha fatto la Melissa sull'Italia. Melissa ha fatto un'interpretazione sua sulla nostra tradizione e sul suo cuore. Sono molto emozionato. Un macellaio che piange. <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Hi. Today I made Hosanta Grill Black Gooper with a spicy tomato crustacean sauce and a corn pitaya salad. I have a lot of fun. I, I actually I managed to make some salt, so like. <laughs> and how did you make the red tomato sauce? First of all, I start off a, a crustacean stock, and I also fire roasted habanero. It has a really nice spiciness. Thank you. Why did you choose grouper? When I look at open fire, I immediately decided that I would like to choose a fatty fish. That was a very smart thing to do. Michelle, you usually rely on your heritage when it comes to cooking, and we're not getting that here. Did that sort of throw you at all? So that's why I made the shrimp salt, because I feel like that's kind of like a touch of my, my Asian heritage. Okay. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Chad. That girl can cook. Overall, uh, I really enjoy it. Just my fish was a little bit dry. But... A tiny bit dry. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, was your fish dry? It was fine. I like the fish on Shirley's dish. For me, Shirley's dish says, you know, I know what I was doing in the beginning, and then I did it. I, you know, I think the hardest thing in this challenge is, you know, I'm looking at a pantry from here, is you want to use everything in there. Right. Because there's so many great things, and especially as a chef, you see something new, and you want to explore it. And I think Shirley did a good job of editing things down. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. This is my brother, Yannick. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. The product that we're showcasing today is Gigi's Party Piquis, which is a very traditional Haitian condiment. It's made with onions, shallots, cabbage, and carrots. We did a Haitian Creole-style chicken. And the chicken was marinated in black pepper, thyme, a little bit of clove. I think it really works to show well with the contrast of the dark stew. Your stew is delicious. Thank you, Padma. Chicken is braised so nicely. Refrigerated item or shelf item? It is definitely shelf stable. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. What a handsome family, right? I think that he really met the challenge of picking a product and showcasing the best way to serve it. All right. Hey, Sarah, what are, what are you making? Matzo basu. You found matzo here? We found China? unleavened bread. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a really nice umami broth. My mother found a bunch of like stuff. She was like, oh, can we get this? It looks really cool. I'm going to put some Chinese garlic chives, and I'm going to poach them in a piri piri broth. Oh, OK. Cool. I know you've probably had a lot of matzo balls. My wife is Jewish, and I make matzo ball soup every Passover. So yeah. Never made matzo ball soup without matzo, so. Yeah. Good luck with that. Figure it out. <laughs> Make a big old sloppy ass mess. I want to serve my mother perfect matzo balls. If the matzo ball is hard, I'm screwed. Sarah did Kentucky so proud. Well, thank you. There she is. Hey, Hello. Mama. Hi, Sarah. Hello. 
So um, I made for you chicken thighs with matzo balls and a savory mushroom consomme. Why don't you sit down? Shut up. <laughs> I'm serious, girl. You're going to eat right. this soup with all of us. All right. I poached the matzo balls in a piri piri. Then I also have a little bird's eye chili in there, too. And my mom told me a trick that I never knew before, which was to put a little soda water in soda there. Soda water, of course. I didn't know that. The matzo balls are delicious. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mom. Not, not really hard awesome. in the middle at all. No. They are not no, hard really? at all. What do you think your soup? I think you guys should probably just say, like, Sarah, it's so good. You won. Touch that. <laughs> <laughs>